hi guys welcome to my channel in this video i'm going to show you how to connect sound card to fl studio how to connect sound card to fl studio so now that we are in fl studio right here and as you can see this is our fl studio so when you want to connect your sound card where you need to go is we we have different uh, menu section here so on top of this menu section you go to option so in the option right here in option you can see meeting settings audio settings so ignore all these ones so where you go to is audio settings audio settings so i'm going to click audio settings right now so i'm in audio settings here we also have different different uh bars um here so um so i'm not in audio settings so what you see here in the audio settings you see this black box here so this box actually is where you find the different settings so in the box right here in the settings you find fl studio as you so when you click you find different drivers okay so the first drivers that you find which is primary sound driver speakers focus right usb speaker to high definition audio device so these are primary sound drivers that are that are that can that are activating your internal or laptop sound driver system so your internal sound card that came with your laptop or desktop these are the drivers that have connect them where you have the primary sound driver speaker focus right usb speaker to definition and all that so when you have external sound card we are going to install your external sound card driver so your external sound card driver which is asu asu devices right here that you see the asu for ov2 fs studio asu focus right usb generic low latency asu driver so for me i have two sound card so my two external sound card are focus right and the pro fire m audio so right now before you can have you can see your driver appear here the first thing what you need to do is to install the driver that came with your sound card if you have a focus right you can go to their website and download the driver or just enter online and download the driver or possible you may find a cd that might come with the package you are buying the focus right sound card and install it also with the mod you can go online download the driver or you have a cd where you can install it into your system so immediately you finish installation you restart your system and you come to this option here your driver will be seen okay then next for you to be able to set up high quality well, i'm also going to go through other settings where you can be able to set up your audio quality so you so that you can have a high quality audio when working with your audio software music production software so if you look by the right here by the left here you don't see that we have um, 48,000 hertz we have a 44 22 44 48 for 88 96 192 kilohertz so these are different quality ratio where if you set it on a higher quality for example i put this on 88 or 88 any sound or any creation you create at this particular level is going to give you high quality sound but definitely you're going to require large computer space like your hard drive because the audio file itself is going to be large in its mb so the more high quality you record the larger the mb so another thing is the higher you go for example you're using 96 and 192 kilohertz you have to use a very very solid computer system that is high you now have between let's say core i7 core i8 core i9 core i10 with up to 16 to 32 gig upward then you can be able to use this higher quality because the higher it is you must have a computer or a laptop that can help you help you that can help you um handle the responsibility yeah so the next one is buffer length so buffer length is actually uh, a ram a ram or memory um a ram that your software need to be able to function so if you have low buffer ram your software cannot be able to process your audio that you are creating then if you have a higher buffer ram then it can be able to process um for this sake for the sake of this um uh, tutorial i'm actually using this particular one because it enables my software to run very well but if for example depending the capacity of your system and you discover that maybe you are using 256 and it's not working well for you all you need to do is to upgrade for me 
when I when I put it on 256 or 512, my software was not running smoothly, so I had to put it on one gig plus. So you can actually actually leave this once as a default input, okay? So the next one is your priorities. Um, so these settings are actually the settings that can make your audio quality come out well and big, you know. So here, when I first installed my FS Studio, it was on normal. So I had to take it to higher so that it can be able to process for me well because I have a very high quality system. My system here is over 16 gig plus so it can process a high quality audio. The reason why I'm able to start putting all these settings in place to have high quality audio. So here you have 48. By default, Focusrite comes with 48 volts, 48 kilohertz sample rate. So 48 is, is higher than 411 like my m audio profile also have these options you just simply go there and put it on the option but uh, focus right actually program it on 48 hertz by default to be able to give you high quality so the next sample here is a missing sample for example okay the cpu management so here on the cpu management you can see there is a button here multi-thread generator process processor so this one helps to take care of your CPU processing. So multi-thread simply means if as this button is on, if at a particular time, maybe your applications or your plugins are getting heavier and it's going to reduce the performance of your system, your system will automatically increase the processor to be able to handle the workload that you are putting in. Like maybe you are adding plugins, you are adding extra sound and all those. So the more you add sound, the more load the computer has to process. So with this particular button, it will help you to automatically generate more power from your system and to process. You have the multi-thread generator processing, multi-thread mixer processing. So for your mixer as well, when you are fun when you're functioning on your mixer. So also with this button here, so make sure you leave this button like this to enable your software function greatly. Then the next one is your mixer option right here. So it's a resampling quality. Resampling quality simply means, remember that the higher your sample, look at your sample rate here. This is sample 48. So if you higher your sample, like we have 500 points, the higher the quality your sample can be able to generate. So when you first install FS Studio, what you're going to have is two point linear. This is exactly how it comes by default. Depending the software, or depending the system or computer device you're going to install, depending the capability. So right, because my system is big and it's high enough, has a very high quality, I'm using a desktop. So I went to put it on 512. So with 512, you can see, look at the option here. See, this option is provided to allow you to more accurate hear the, accurately hear the song as it will be rendered and to help FS Studio perform better in questionable test run. Okay, you see. So although if your computer is not, it is slow as well if you don't expect actually as if you do. so this basically means that if your computer is not high enough the tendency that is going to slow down your your performance of the software is there because it your computer may not have your computer does not have enough resources to be able to for this for your software to be able to function well definitely is going to slow your performance down so for me my computer is very okay i have over 16 gig ram I'm using Core i7 and it can be able to process it. So now, and I take it down to 512 point to be able to help me hear good feedback and process high quality. So I also have um, other buttons here. For example, like this preview mixer. In case you want to preview feedback, you can go to your mixer channel. For example, if you want your mixer channel on it so that the sound will be passing through that mixer channel 8, you will just dedicate it to that then that is what this one does if you want to preview your sound through a MISA channel. But for the case of this, for my own, I don't think I need it. So I actually put it back to zero. But in case you need it, you can as well experiment it and check it out and know how it works for you. So I also have extra buttons here, which is play truncated notes on trash, transport, reset plugins in case you have errors and you want to reset plugins. So this is what these buttons are used for. But for the now, you have to, if you want to reset plugins, that's after you finish your project. So if you click this button, anytime you finish, your plugin goes back to reset. So I'm sure you don't want that to happen. So make sure you leave this button like this and it will help you a lot. So after you have finished your project, to also be able to export on high quality samples. I'm going to show you that settings as well. So once you finish your project like this one that I have, so, and I want to export it for your clients. All I simply do is to go to file, 
and I will go to export. So now that I'm in export, you have different files here. You have the WAV file, MP3 file, OGG file, FLAC, MIDI format, MIDI file formats. I think that these are different formats. So let's assume you want to export to WAV file, WAV format, or WAV format. So I'll just go right here, like I want to use this as an example. So you can see there are different settings here. For, for here, leave it as full song, not pattern. Leave it at full song. Then, like it's a project type, right? So here you leave it at leave reminder. So this particular one does different things. At the tail of your project after you export, if you say cut reminder, it will not leave extra frequency after it has finished rendering the tail of your project. So leave, leave reminder means it can leave small audio so that the audio can be able to fade out a bit. Wrap reminder is almost this something close like cut reminder to just help you make it concise so that the unwanted sound may not come into your project. But I'm using this particular leave reminder because it's best for me so that you can have, you can be able to see how the complete audio project sound like. Okay, so I spot my audio at 32 bit, which is the highest bit rate to, you know, then I use 5 point, 5, 12 points. This is also high quality HQ for all high quality for all plugins. I also ensure that my audio is there as well, you know. Then if you are exporting at 24 at 16 bit rate, then you see this button comes on. This simply means it will help you to um, add a little background frequency and also remove cancel noise cancellation on your project. Okay, but I usually do use for my recording. I use 32 bits float. So leave the rest of the plugin. This particular place miscellaneous simply means, for example, if you check my project right here, I have tags tags here to be able to split where you have all the different sections in the music. So when you put on these particular buttons, when you want to export it, to actually include all the different tags. It will just include different tags for you. So here on this button here, in case you want to send a project to a missing and mastering engineer, you want to split them, split them into uh, uh, stems. All you simply do before you export, you just click this button on and you export it to help you separate them in stems. Okay. Disab disable man's more polyphony okay in case of any error and all that so you also if you want to render mp3 or you just simply do is to switch here and go to mp3 and put that off you can as well render multiple files at the same time for example i put them on these are different file formats we have wave file format you have mp3 file format you have ogg file format you have flac you have midi so imagine yeah, so for example maybe i want all these files all i simply do is just to put them on just way i I'm putting them off right now is to put them on then you export the different file and this and place it to where you want to place it or maybe you want to send it to your client or whatever depending the five four months they are playing that is how you're going to render and send to them then imagine that you want to maybe mp3 so for your mp3 settings you can to regulate the mb i think mine is on 192 but if you want to have very high quality mp3 like you have up to 10 or maybe 10, 12, 8 MB that can sound very close as the wave without no much compressor. All you simply do is to drag to the end to give you 320. But most of the time, because because I usually send my files on WhatsApp and also on that on other link so that maybe clients and other every other person can be able to download. I have to put it on 182 or 192. This is 160. I also use 122 sometimes depending how the customer requests that it should be compressed. Okay. So this is also flag. You come here, you also see OGG file. You can just increase, just like you want to increase the quality. Yeah, just like that, including flag. Want to increase the quality? You come here, see, right? That's how it works. Then including MIDI. If you have a MIDI file, you want to control. Yeah, that's basically how it works, guys. So um, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification of this uh, video to ensure that whenever we upload a new video, you get a notification. Okay. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make beats from scratch. So make sure you watch the next video, guys.